this is just going to be a really quick video looking at setting up an incubator ready for hatching some little chicks. This is the incubator that I use. It's a Brincey Mini Advance, as you can see. It's got a tray in the base, so looking at incubating seven eggs at a time, which is plenty for me. It's not like I'm going to be raising a whole farmyard full of chickens. So, first thing we'll just take a look at is the eggs themselves. Now, when you buy eggs through the post, this is how they're going to arrive with you. They'll be packed up in a polystyrene box like this. As you can see from the writing on the front, I've bought a batch of mixed Dutch bantams. And this is how your eggs will arrive. You can see these ones have had the type written on them. I don't know if you can just about read that. So the seller of these ones has packed them in here. They're nice and tightly inside. This one was broken, which unfortunately is part and parcel with buying them online. It's, yeah, just something that happens. If more than half of them were broken, I'd send them back. But losing one, I'm not too bothered about. But that's how they'll be packed. Check them over. Make sure each one is solid, clean, no cracks, no damage. Nothing that's going to cause you any concern. They should be a standard size. They should all be a standard weight. If they've been written on them in pencil, like these ones have, that's not a problem. If they've been written on them with pen, send them back. They shouldn't have been written on with pen. But those ones are fine and they're ready to go in the incubator. So we'll look at getting that one set up next. So the next thing we need to do is we need to look at actually setting up our incubator. So I've switched it on. As you can see, it's already started warming up. We're already up to 31.4 degrees. You can see it going down now that I've lifted it up. It'll go down quite quickly on the temperature gauge. So on these handy little models, we, need, we can set everything that we need to use to control the atmosphere that's inside the incubator for hatching our eggs. To do that, first thing we do is we just press the two buttons on the side. And that brings up a list of everything that we're able to make changes to. So just sort of cycling through everything that we can have a look at. First of all, temperature. Probably the most self-explanatory one of the different settings. All chicken eggs, you're going to be looking at incubating them at 37.5 degrees. That's the same across the board, regardless of size or breed. That's fine. Number of days. That one changes according to the size of egg that you're going to be incubating. So looking at my little bantam eggs over there, I'm going to be looking at about 20 days. Whereas if you were incubating quail or sort of a smaller duck species like teal, you'd be looking at more like 18 to 20 days, and then it's 21 days for the larger chicken eggs. I mean, anything bigger than that, like a goose egg, would be too large to put in this incubator anyway, so 21's probably going to be about your maximum. So on that one, you can see I've already got that set to 20 days. Go down, go back up, Let's stick it there. T mode, that's turning mode. Do you want the incubator to automatically turn the eggs for you? Unless you've got a lot of time to spare, always get some, an incubator that can automatically turn your eggs. Manual turning is a real pain, if I'm honest. I mean, in manual turning, what you need to do is, so each of your eggs needs to be flipped through around 180 degrees every four hours so you'd have them sitting up on the incubator and then every four hours you need to turn them over wait four hours turn it over wait four hours turn it over through the night throughout the whole day and yeah for the 21 days it's going to take for those to incubate you can imagine it's going to become a real chore so always get an automatic incubator if you can so do we want turning mode yes we do the mode is on that's fine Turning interval, so that's how often do you want the machine to flip the eggs over. In this case, we're going to be looking at 60 minutes. That's pretty standard across the board. I haven't come across any eggs yet that need to be turned any more frequently than that. Turning angle. This will change for how long the machine moves the base plate on your incubator. So... If we just bring the base back over, 
you can see that it's got this little tray on the bottom and that's how it's going to be turning our eggs over. I'll pop one in. Place that down there. So if you see on the actual incubator itself we've got a little motor down at the bottom and that turns through the cog and it'll just spin it around gently. As you can see the egg goes round and there you go it's done a full revolution there and it's ended up back where it was before. You want your machine to be turning the eggs by about 180 degrees each time it moves them. The aim of turning the eggs over is to keep the yolk as central in the egg as you possibly can. If it sits against the walls and it sticks to the walls as the chick is growing, it can actually cause the embryo inside to die. So that's why we need to make sure our eggs are turning by at least 180 each time they go around. So, in the case of deciding which angle you want yours to work with, to be honest, it really does depend on the size of egg that you're using. The best thing to do is to just start off at a reasonably small angle. So in this case, I'm going to be looking at a three. And then the first time the eggs are moved by the machine, just keep an eye on it. Just watch them as it turns them to make sure it's moving them by about 180 degrees. So that's fine for us though. Alarms. Now the good brands of incubators like this one, they'll have an alarm that goes off whenever the temperature gets too high. So if the temperature goes more than one degree or however how high you set it above your 37.5, it can damage the embryo that's inside. It can either cause the egg to hatch much later if the temperature goes down or if the temperature goes up then it'll just kill off the embryo. So you need to keep the temperature as stable at 37.5 as you can. So in this case, I'm setting mine so that the alarm will go off if it gets more than 1.5 degrees above or below that 37.5. So yeah, there's the low alarm. You can set that to be different if you wanted to. In this case, I'm keeping it the same. Low. Cooling. Now this is a Brincy Advance setting this is. So what it does is it allows you to switch off the temperature, switch off the heating element that's inside the machine for a set period during the day. And what that's supposed to mimic is the, when the hen leaves the eggs and goes off to feed, obviously the eggs will cool down during that time. And what they found is that if they mimic that in the incubator when the eggs are being incubated when they're being warmed through then you get a better hatch rate if you allow them to cool down for a little while so whereas if normally you might get a 50% hatch rate if you cool them down for an hour or so during the day you might get more like a 70% hatch rate so it, it doesn't make a huge difference but it makes enough of a difference for the, the feature to be worthwhile so in this case yep we definitely want to be using cooling and we're going to chill them for 60 minutes during a cycle CF, that's just changing um, how you want the temperature to be displayed. Do you want Celsius? Do you want Fahrenheit? I want Celsius, English. And that's everything that we need to be changing on our incubator, so that's fine. So you can see now on the settings, it's telling us exactly what stage we're at. T, so we're turning, we're switched on. Temperature is currently at 21.5, that'll go up as soon as I put it over the eggs. Uh, we are at 20 days at the moment, that'll tick down as each day goes past. And if you see this little spinning symbol here, that's telling us that we're currently in turning mode. So the um, machine will be automatically turning our eggs for us. Just one other note to say, on these models sometimes you can get a little P that appears next to the zero or would be by the zero there on the 20. When that happens, it means that there's been a power outage, in which case you need to just be aware that at some point the power has gone off on the incubator and it may have affected the eggs, but in that case, there's not a huge amount you can do, to be honest. But everything's all set up now, we're ready to go. Now we just need to get the eggs set. One other thing that's really important when you're incubating eggs is that they need to be kept at the correct humidity. 
So you'll see on this model, I've got a little well on the inside. And that's for where you put your water. To begin with, they don't need a great deal of humidity while they're just sort of heating up and going through the first three quarter stages of them developing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill up just one side of that well. I've only filled up that side. There's no water in this side at the moment. And that's absolutely fine to begin with. Towards the end of the incubation process, we'll be refilling the other side as well to increase the humidity. But for now, this is what we need. So we'll just pop our little eggs on. One question I always get asked is, how can you tell the gender of what's going to come out of an egg? You can't, is the answer. They could be male, they could be female. It's hit and miss, and that's half the fun of raising chickens. Right, so that's it. That's absolutely fine with them on there. They're all free moving. They're all going to turn around fine as the machine moves them. Don't worry about them wobbling. That's not going to do any damage. And then all we do is pop our incubator on the top. And leave it to get started. So you see, oh, I just move that a little bit. Already our temperature's up to 21.2 degrees C, so it heats up really quickly. Once the incubation has started, you mustn't stop it. You have to keep it going now until the chicks have hatched. If you stop it and it switches off for more than a couple of hours, the eggs will cool and your chicks will die. So once it's started, keep it going, and we'll come back in a few days and have a look at candling our eggs to see if they're fertile.